Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, I'm going to talk about a common mistake that most beginners make when it comes to painting shadows. It is a mistake that I make as well when I first started sketching. So the mistake is beginners, they are usually not bold enough to paint the shadow areas dark enough. So shadow areas like this, they are actually close to black, but in this case here, this was a sketch that I sketched many years ago. The shadows were painted a bit too light compared to what they were actually in real life. And also the trees in the background, they are close to black. So when you paint your shadows a bit too lightly, when the contrast is not right, the whole sketch will appear a bit washed out. So let me compare this to a sketch where I have painted the dark areas really dark. So in this particular sketch, you can see that the difference is quite significant. So for this particular sketch, the dark areas here, they are actually just close to black. And we have even darker mid values. I think this value is quite similar to this value. but. In this sketch, there is no black like this. That's why the contrast here is not as strong compared to the contrast here. When you have black set against white, you can see a very strong contrast, but when you have a gray set against white, the contrast is not as strong. And with uh, this limited range of values, you are limited um, to the contrast that you can create. But if you actually were to paint uh, some of the dark areas really dark and you work uh, with the different gray tones within the dark and the light you can get a sketch with um, more tonal values and it will look a bit more interesting and striking all right so in today's tutorial i'm going to um, paint this sketch using water soluble graphite and some ink to show you how it is done I'll just be using black and white today because I think it's easier for you to understand but the same concept can be applied to watercolor as well. With watercolor, there are different colors to consider but the main thing comes down to this. What you want to achieve is the difference in contrast. So even with colors, we can have white contrast against a color. We can have white contrast against a gray tone and with gray tones, we can contrast against other colors as well. So um, when it comes to using black and white, you do not have to think so much because it's just light versus dark. But when it comes to color, we have light versus dark, color versus color. So um, let's start with something uh, simpler first. The reference photo that I will be using is this. You can download it from the link in the video description below. But let's take a look at this reference photo first. So this part here, this part is predominantly white, but part of it is under shadow. So this will be a gray tone. Now, in this gray tone, there are parts that are really much darker. For example, here, you can see this part here. This part is much darker compared to the shadow area here. And even within the shadows, there are some lighted part as well because of the reflected light from the street it bounces off and comes up that's why we have these are lighted areas within the shadow but i'm just going to paint all this area in one wash this are uh, this wash here but for this area here which is under the roof this is close to black so i want to paint this black the tricky part here is some of the windows and some of the walls they are in color so um, usually for colors i will paint them with a lighter shade of gray tones and then overlay the shadows like this part onto the, the so-called colors but in this case since we are using black and white i will just paint them with a light shade of gray tones now what's interesting is this part here you see this part here this pillar has two shades of actually three shades of um, colors, tones. We have this shade here, which is lighted. So I'll call this a uh, no shade. This is in shade. So we have one value. And this side here, it's darker compared to this side. So we have two values now. And this 
this lighted part of the window this is lighter compared to this and actually this part is very similar to this gray tone in terms of value even though this is in shadow but this is in light but this is still considered darker because this blue color is quite strong and when we moved into the shadow you can see that this part here it's much darker compared to this part here in the shadow even though even though this shadow and this shadow is cast by the same roof so by right it should be um, this shade here but this shade here is actually overlaid onto this uh, dark color here that's why this one uh, this part here is appear it appears to be uh, darker and within the window itself again I'm not sure if you can see here but this lines here this part here this is close to black this part here there are other subtle changes in values within this area for example this part here is darker compared to this some of these lines here they are also in shade and some of these lines as well and you can see the windows this part here is close to black and all these um, horizontal vents they are close to black as well and when we come down here this part is in shadow this shadow here is similar to this uh, shadow here and this part here we have this white part which is in shadow and this is in light so this is um, no shade no tones we have one value here and this is black this is actually just black throughout all right now with all of this in mind let's start painting let me show you the tools that I will be using today. This is Durant Graphite Tone. This is Water Soluble Graphite. This is my usual watercolor brush, the Navskaya Palitra size 5 Kolinsky Sable brush. I will also be using ink. This is Kuretake Black Ink 60. Black Ink 60 is waterproof when dry. The Sumi Ink 60 is not waterproof when dry. And I have a dedicated brush for using this uh, black ink with. And of course, I need some water to dilute the water soluble graphite. And I have this tray here, which I'm going to use right now to create a wash of water soluble graphite. If you have a water brush, you know those brush with water reservoir behind, it's going to be much easier to dilute this because you don't have to constantly reload the brush with water so i'm just going to create a large pool of water soluble graphite first it's going to take me a while to create the wash because i need to create a lot because this area here is quite large oops you can see i accidentally spilled some uh, wash onto the paper but I'm just going to let it be like that doesn't really matter there are other water soluble products in the market for example we have the art graph which is water soluble graphite in this thing you can create a larger wash much quicker but sometimes I like to use the graphite tone because I can create splatter marks easily uh, not like this but later on maybe I'll show you alright let's test out the wash that I have created okay this is a very nice wash it's not that dark so earlier on I said that the most common mistake that people have when it comes to creating shadows is it's not dark enough so in this case I'm actually coloring the colors of this uh, part of the shop house here later on is when i will add the dark shadow so this shade that i'm using this is actually not shadow so there is a difference all right so this is the colored area and now i'm going to mix an even darker wash i think this is not enough to cover this whole area here and now i have a darker wash of graphite so let's paint over the area so this is darker definitely 
So let's paint over this whole area here. And let's uh, try and pay attention to the shapes that the shadows are creating. Because the angle of the shadow actually goes at this uh, direction, at that angle. Now this graphite, it behaves a bit differently compared to the art graph graphite because um, it's just different. With Durant Graphite Tone, it's a bit more even, but with art graph, the graphite can be a bit patchy. So I actually mixed Durant Graphite Tone with some uh, Art graph that's why it appears a bit patchy right now probably shouldn't have done that but um, doesn't really matter so let's try and paint this There is another building here and I want to contrast this building with this uh, building so that people can see that they are two separate buildings. So for this building here, I'm just going to apply a very light wash of graphite just to separate it using contrast. You can see that this is really patchy because I was using the art graph. It's much faster to mix a larger wash with this compared to this, but I can get a much even wash when I mix it with the Derwin Graphic Tone. So uh, each product has its own pros and cons. The front of all these windows, it's actually slightly darker compared to the side. I think that's because the light is sort of coming from um, this direction. So I want to use a very light wash of graphite to color the front. So you can see that there is this uh, separation there. And for the last stage, I want to use black ink and color some of the really dark areas which are directly beneath the roof. I actually wanted to mix a concentrated wash of graphite. When you apply ink like this, it's going to look a bit different because the medium is different from graphite. Graphite has a particular shine on it. that uh, ink doesn't have but using ink is a very quick way to achieve contrast now if you want to make your sketch look a bit harmonious with ink and graphite you can apply ink first and then apply graphite over the ink so that you can have that graphite wash over the ink it's going to look a bit better So this is the completed sketch. Now, first of all, I would say that um, the first thing that caught my eye is this area here. The contrast between these uh, colored windows versus the white, the contrast is much stronger compared to the sketch that I have. So I should have painted these windows a bit darker. 
but if I paint this windows darker that means I will have to paint the shadow areas even darker so um, that's something to take note of and initially when I painted this area here I thought that it's going to turn out to be a bit too dark darker than uh, the reference photo but now that I look at it I think that it's quite close maybe this is a bit darker but it's quite close perhaps I could have a gradated wash along this line here that is underneath the roof so that it fades from dark to slightly lighter because I can see some sort of gradation here in the shadow areas the Derwent Graphitone is a fantastic product if you want to practice your tonal values they are available in 2B, 4B, 6B and 8B if you want to buy them I recommend you skip one step that means if you buy 4B get the 8B and if you buy 2B get the 6B but um, don't get all the 4 one of the main reasons why I liked the Graphitone so much is because it is highly transparent when you mix it for example you see this part here the lines the black lines they still show through very clearly even beneath the graphite wash and halfway through while painting this sketch I got a little bit impatient so I mixed this the art graph with graphitone and the, the problem or the characteristic of this art graph is it's going to make the wash a bit patchy so in this case here you can see all the graphite concentrating in certain areas here it's a bit difficult to get the wash to apply evenly like this with the graphitone the art graph um, it's a bit more challenging to handle if you want to create really flat washes and also in thicker concentration you can see that this will just cover up the lines behind so this area is here the art graph graphite has covered up the lines behind for a sketch like this I only use three tones we have the lighter tone we have the darker tone and then we have black so you can very quickly create a sketch using just three tones for beginners do not be afraid to make your shadows a bit darker if you are unsure of how dark your shadows should be you can actually just draw tiny thumbnails and practice using tonal values on those thumbnails the objective or the goal of practicing with tonal values is to help you get the contrast right to help you get the relationship between light and shadow right for example you want to get the contrast between light and the mid-tone right you want to get the contrast between the mid-tone and the black right and even within the shadow areas itself there are different shades you want to get the contrast between this mid-tone and this uh, darker tone right and this dark tone to this lighter mid-tone uh, you want to get the relationship right if you are afraid to paint really black areas in your sketch for example this Part here this is close to black if you do not paint this and if you are just working with this limited uh, value of tones then this area here you will probably color this with this tone and it's not going to look right because very obviously this is much darker compared to this area here because this mid tone here this is equivalent to this mid-tone here and this is visibly darker compared to this and this so if you are just using this then you are sort of limiting the values that you have in your scene and it's going to affect the contrast of your sketch the last thing I want to say is for art graph and the graphitone the graphite is waterproof when dry and they are pretty resistant to smearing but if you run your finger or hand over the graphite you are still going to pick up some graphite so to protect your sketch I do recommend that you spray some fixative over the sketch especially if you have other artworks on the opposite page so this will protect this as well as this that's all for this tutorial if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below and if you have any troubles painting shadows before maybe after trying out this uh, technique you can share with me how well it works for you 
All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.